what is going on guys i actually need that <laughs> what is going on guys welcome to amigos code my name is nelson and in this video i want to share with you 10 bad programming habits if you're new to my channel go ahead and subscribe and also give me a thumbs up so i can keep on recording videos like this also, if you haven't joined the private Facebook group, go ahead and join because the community is over 6,000 people and growing. And basically, everyone's there to learn how to code together. If you have any questions, you can post them on the group and there will be people there to help you. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share with you 10 bad programming habits that you should avoid. Number one is you don't grasp the fundamentals. So in order for you to become a really good developer, you need to know the foundations well enough. That's the only way that you're going to move forward, right? Don't jump between learning, you know, advanced features if you haven't grasped the fundamentals. It is really, really crucial that you grasp the fundamentals. So, for example, if you've learned Python, make sure that you know how classes work, methods, um, uh, objects, you know, if you learn Java, abstract classes, interfaces, you know, OOP, basically just have the fundamentals grasped, right? So you need the fundamentals. And a lot of people, they, they miss on that and they, they, they jump across um, you know, learning, you know, the advanced features where they're actually missing the fundamentals well enough. Number two is that you don't practice enough. You don't practice enough. So you see here in my YouTube channel and on my website, I've been teaching people how to code for some time now. And I always beg that you practice as I teach because that's the best way for you to learn. So there is no point of view taking my courses or any other courses on YouTube or or the platforms and just sit down there and just watch without actually practicing. Right. So it is it is it is bad. You're just wasting your time. So for that, make sure that you have a GitHub account and basically all the projects that you have, make sure you put it there, because that way, when you apply for jobs, then you can showcase your portfolio. So that's how you build your portfolio, right? So there is proof that, you know, that guy or, uh, you know, that girl, you know, she, um, you know, the person is actually motivated and, you know, they actually want to uh, learn how to code and, you know, you've got something to show basically, right? Number three is that you give up too soon. So what I mean is when you are faced with a problem, you kind of just freeze. You kind of just freeze and you didn't even think or try to solve the problem and you're already frozen, right? You're already frozen. So take your time, take your time, take your time. If you are faced with, you know, a, a, a programming challenge or a group project or a feature that you have to implement, take your time to um, think on the actual problem that you are trying to solve, right? So, you know, just make sure that you don't give up. Even if things are hard, don't give up, don't give up, right? And if you are really stuck, so if you've tried everything, if you've tried everything, then that's the best time for you to actually ask someone for help. And that brings to point number four, which is you don't ask for help. Now, you see, sometimes you might be embarrassed about your code or you might think that people will laugh about your your code, right? Because you might be shy and, you know, someone more experienced might look at your code and you might think that they will judge you. No, no, that's not the case, right? So make sure to ask questions, even if they are silly questions, right? You know, uh, assuming that you really don't know it, right? Because if you are a junior developer, then obviously, you know, these kind of things are, are quite common to be honest, right? So don't be afraid of asking questions. Trust me, like it's just gonna hurt you, right? So, you know, there, there were times where I used to be embarrassed and I used to just, you know, try and fix it. But then I was like really stuck and I, 
I was like, should I ask question or should I not? You know, will they think I'm, I'm, I'm a dumb guy? Trust me, just ask questions. Habit number five is that you don't plan beforehand. So most of us, when we're faced with problems, you might just dive into code, right? And try and implement it and uh, creating lots of things and things might not work properly, so on and so forth, right? So what I would say there is don't do that, right? So what you need is to actually plan what you are going to solve, right? When I mean plan, I mean, for example, using Lucid chart for creating your, um, you know, diagram. So, you know, what, um, uh, entities do talk to each other, make sure that you design the database correctly. Cause once you have all of that, then you actually are simply solving a puzzle, right? A puzzle. And you know that when solving a puzzle, you need to have a strategy. And this is the exact same thing, right? So now you can, you know, fix this part of the puzzle first, and then you can move on to that one, this one, and then you just connect them together and things will flow much easier for you. Trust me. Habit number six, you copy code from Stack Overflow. Now there is nothing wrong about copying code, but if you are starting out, then what people tend to do is actually copy code and then change it around. Or if you know, you're doing an assignment or a group project, you might steal other people's code and then change it according to your, to your needs and, you know, few classes, names, variables, so on and so forth. Right. Don't do that. Right. So, you know, we professional software engineers, we, we don't copy code. Really. We, we don't copy code. Right. So, you know, there are times that yes, it is fine for you to base your idea based of someone else, but this is when you actually know what you are doing. If you don't know what you're doing and you want to learn, right? Because that way, if you just copy code, you're not learning, you're just wasting your time, right? Bad habit number seven is that you overcomplicate simple problems you overcomplicate simple problems. You see, for example, if you've grasped the fundamentals of Python or Java or C++, right? So, you know, when you start, you know, you might, you might think that, oh, I know this feature. So let me use this feature. I know this pattern. Let me use this pattern. And then when you realize your code is so complex for something very simple. Now, let me ask a question. If I was to give you my code, right? And I'm using all of these patterns and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prove a point here and I'm trying to, you know, write the most complex code, which only I understand, right? Would you be happy about it? Would you learn anything from it? No, no. You just pretty much say, what the heck is this? Right? And when you write code, especially professionally, we try to keep things simple, right? Keep it simple, stupid kiss it. That's the term actually. Number eight, you don't accept critics. So this is when, for example, you have written some code. Let's say that you spent one day writing a piece of code, right? And you know, you struggle a lot, a lot and you know, you're really proud, but then comes along someone with more experience and says, do you know what? We can do something better or we can improve your code, so on and so forth, right? So often people, they, 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 they try to prove a point, they try to argue, but, you know, always listen, always listen for advice, right? So, um, you know, the, the cool thing about software engineering is that you have people with different ways of thinking, and this is what makes good software, right? So when you listen, for their advice, you know, you, you don't have to take their advice 100% on board, but listen and you might learn something new. Trust me. And also don't be upset if uh, you know what you've written today, uh, someone changes it tomorrow, right? I can guarantee you, you 100% the code that you write today will not be the same next week, next month, a year down the line, because requirements do change. Point number nine is that you are stuck with one language and you don't accept new technologies. So 
don't be someone that that just says, Do you know what, I'm, 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 I'm a Java software engineer or I only do Python or I only do C++, right? Don't be that guy or girl, right? Make sure that you can solve any problem using whatever language needed. Just be a software engineer and that way you will go much, much further. Because after all, a programming language is simply a tool that allows you to solve problem, right? So Java is not the language for every single project. Python is not the language for every single project. JavaScript neither, right? So make sure that you adapt to new languages and start experimenting on other languages, right? Because you will realize that all of these languages are pretty much kind of the same, but they, 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 they do different things better than others. Um, but you know, the, the, the main concept across all of these languages are the same. Final bad habit that you might have is that you are not part of Amigos code. Yes, Amigos code. Actually, I'm joking. So you are not part of any coding community. So, you know, I've got my private Facebook group where people are there to learn, you know, even myself, I've, I've been learning like literally quite a lot because, you know, people with different skills and different experiences and different uh, knowledge. And sometimes I'm, I'm like, wow, you know, this group is, is actually helping me to learn something new, right? So when you join a community, um, you, you actually are learning, uh, you build your network, you meet people. Um, it's not just, you know, Facebook groups, but you've got Discord, you can attend to uh, hackathons and meetups so on and so forth. So make sure that you are part of, you know, any coding community. And this is pretty much the 10 bad habits of a programmer. So the reason why I'm sharing this with, with you is that when you are facing or when you are going through these bad habits, you can stop and realize that, hold on, hold on, Nelson, he told me about these bad habits. So let me stop, reset, and improve on what I'm doing bad or wrong, right? So that's the goal. I'm, I'm actually here to give you advice so you can become a better software engineer. You can, you know, progress through your career. You can, you know, apply for jobs, so on and so forth, right? So this is the goal really with Amigos Code. So if you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe. And also let me know what you thought about this video. Is there a point or a bad habit that I've missed? comment down below, comment down below. So make sure to join my private Facebook group. If you haven't done already, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. This is all for now and I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.